Hey, how do you decide which variables in your application should be signals? Here are some guidelines. If a variable in a component is bound in the UI and can change, that variable should be a signal. Why? Because Angular can then better track what has changed in the template, run change detection more deliberately, and limit the amount of re-rendering needed to display changes. If a variable holds retrieved data, it should be a signal. Why? Because we often display or manipulate that data, which is easier done when that data is stored in a signal. Plus, with the new resource API, we can easily retrieve data directly into a signal. And if a variable is calculated or composed from other variables, it should be a signal. Why? Because we can leverage computed signals, which dramatically simplify our code. Here is the sample application. It has a vehicle list component that displays a drop-down list of vehicles, a vehicle detail component with vehicle details. This includes the list of films where the vehicle appeared and it has a cart component for purchasing this vehicle. For reference, here again are the guidelines for defining signals. So first, which variables are used in the UI here that should be signals? Well, for our select box, we'll want the vehicle that the user selected. So, selected vehicle. We don't need the individual vehicle elements to be signals, since they are properties of the selected vehicle signal. Over here in the cart, we'd want the variable bound to the quantity text box to also be a signal, so quantity. What about retrieving data? We'll need the list of vehicles for our drop-down list, so vehicles should be a signal. And we'll need the list of films for the selected vehicle, so vehicle films. Lastly, we'll define any calculated or composed values as signals. Yep, that includes the subtotal, delivery fee, tax, and total. We can easily compute these using computed signals. But there is one more. Do you see it? How about the detail page title? Here we compose the title using the selected vehicle name. And we want it to change when the selected vehicle changes. This is easily done using a computed signal. Let's look at the code for these signals. First, the selected vehicle signal. In this example, we define this signal in a service. That way, we can share the signals with all of the components, and each component can react to changes in the selected vehicle signal. In the component, we reference the service signal, and in the template, we bind to that signal using ng-model for two-way binding. For the quantity, we define the quantity signal in the component and bind to it in the template, again using two-way binding. As the user changes the value in the text box, the signal value is automatically changed. We retrieve the data for the list of vehicles using the resource API. The resource API retrieves the vehicle data into the value property of the resource. We access this value property in the component. Use a for loop to create an option element for each vehicle in the vehicle signal. This signal contains the returned array of vehicles. The vehicle films take a bit more work to retrieve. I'll cover that in a later video. Calculated values for our cart total component are defined using computed signals. Here is the price. Why is the price a signal? Because we want it to react to changes in the selected vehicle signal. The subtotal is then the value of the quantity signal times the value of the resulting price signal. The delivery fee is based on the value of the subtotal signal, as is the tax. The total price is then the sum of the subtotal, delivery fee, and tax. Lastly, the page title for our Vehicle Details component displays the name of the selected vehicle, so we define that with a computed signal as well. We access the selected vehicle from the vehicle service and append the vehicle name. In the template, we bind to that title. 
This title will automatically change every time the selected vehicle signal changes. And that's all the signals we need for this sample application. Thanks for watching. If this video was useful, please like and subscribe.